If you want to get a job using AWS, there is nobody better to talk to than an AWS specialist recruiter. They talk with companies and with candidates all day long so they can give a special insight into the process. I talk with Oliver as he explains the hiring process from a recruiter's perspective, some really good tips on how to stand out as a really good AWS developer, and also some special tips on how to find those serverless jobs. So let's jump in. So my name is Oliver, specialize in AWS uh, technology recruitment for a AWS advanced technology partner called Jefferson Frank. We are the only recruitment agency globally that holds uh, any AWS partner status. From my side and from, the, from my audience side, it'd be really good to try and understand what the recruitment process looks like from the other side of the table. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'll go right back to the beginning of the process. We work in partnership with AWS, speak to their customers. Their customers will have requirements. Once we're discussing the requirements, we'll go on what we kind of call qualification calls for the role and also our chance to really kind of unpick the job description, ask questions around the tech stack, why they're looking at certain things, why they're favoring different tools over another, really unpick what they're looking for and actually try and scrap the job description from from what, what they've done and rebuild a new one with them. Then from that qualification call, we'll go off into our networks that we work with, that we maybe know are already looking, contact them. Normally within 24 to 40 hours, we will have a shortlist of five qualified candidates for every role. Following that, we'll then book in a hiring manager CV review. So ourselves and the hiring manager will run through the CVs and it's a bit of a chance for me to give a character description of each of the candidates and why they're looking for this role and why they're interested and what stands out to them. Then we go into the interview process where typically most most interview process about two stages now for most roles. The way we work that is we'll do a call with the candidate head of the interview. We'll confirm the time with them, do a preparation call for about half an hour on Teams, Google Meet Chime, really run through the role, get them prepared as much for the interview, find out what they're going to ask. We want to make sure that they're thoroughly prepared and they're asking the question in the right way that gets the answer that they either want to hear for a good reason or a bad reason during the uh, during the interview. And then following the interview itself, we'll do a catch up call with the candidate. We'll then go and speak to the hiring team, find out their thoughts and opinion. Next steps could be another interview or if it's that final interview stage, it could be an offer. Then we'll deliver the offer and we'll support the candidate through the entirety of the kind of offer stage from contract review, go through all of that to accepting the offer, handing in notice, and then through their onboarding from receiving laptops, equipment, to then their first day, first week on the roll. And we stay with them as a, uh, a guided process for about the first six months normally. So that sounds like you're very involved from like the very start where with, especially with the candidate where like you're kind of helping them prepare, especially helping them prepare for that interview as an interviewer when someone has some really interesting questions or has things that they want to find out about the company not just when am i going to start but like what are you doing why is this product or why are what you're building interesting that instantly shows the level of interest and it's really cool to see that you guys are kind of helping them prepare that have you ever heard of the uh, joel test before this was about 20 years ago um <laughs> a chap called uh joe's Spolosky. Um, he's the CEO of Stack Overflow, but he came up with about 10 to 11 questions on questions that candidates can basically evaluate and ask a dead simple checklist for evaluating the effectiveness of a software engineering team. So these are key questions that I actually say to my candidates, questions that they can ask to find out about a company's tech stack, how they operate, how they work things like are using source control, you know, can you make a build in one step? Do you do daily builds? Do you have a bug database? It's all about those questions to find out, you know, how do they actually operate day to day? One of the things that you mentioned earlier was you reach out to your network. So if I was a say mid-level developer who uses AWS kind of, what is a good way of both like finding a network of recruiters like yourselves? So in terms of finding the network of the right recruiters, you know, there's thousands of recruiters out there in the market. I think one thing that a lot of people can do and they're, they're maybe a bit afraid to do is quiz your recruiter. And what I mean by that is test their knowledge on your market, your ecosystem, even asking about things like, you know, 
building pipelines, you know, programming languages, frameworks, etc. You know, AWS services, quiz them about it. Because if they're actually knowledgeable yeah. and expert in it, they should be able to talk about that, you know, not as a technology developer at all, but they should be able to give you an overview of what what it does, how it works, how it connects with other areas of technology. They should be able to run through all that. And if they can, I'll be honest in saying that's probably where you found a good recruiter. And as I say, you maybe probably need, I would say, maximum three good recruiters in your network. And you should have most of the, op- the, the opportunities unlocked to you. And then kind of is there anything that that candidate could do to kind of stick out in your mind as like oh that guy was really good or she was really into this kind of technology my advice is that if you're wanting to get into a cloud platform as a developer you know work on serverless you've got to be showcasing that to an employer you can't just sit in a job interview or a call with a recruiter and say yeah i want to get into it why? Oh, I don't know. I just I woke, I woke up today and I fancied doing it. Um, you know, you've got to show that learning. Um, on that as well, I think another great area to look at is um, GitHub. I think that's an absolutely fantastic resource for work, for practice projects. There are some candidates who I've literally gone, here's the CV, here's the GitHub, and they've just jumped stages of, in, of interview processes. And if you can say with this project, this is what I attempted to do and this is where it broke and this, these are the fixes. You know, that is absolutely great for companies. Companies want to see how proactive somebody is. The second one, which is a major standout for me, and this is not just in AWS, this is across the board, Azure, GCP, Oracle, other, I mean, there are other platforms and other certifications you get, but certifications are key. I think it's very crucial that, you know, people don't just discount them as oh, a bit of an additional learning or things because the way technology is going at the minute, especially on the serverless side, there is so much out there that you have to do training and programs to develop and showcase. And equally, it's great to put on a CV to a client. Companies are looking at them going, okay, they actually have done something. They've done practice labs, they've done modules on it. Great, we've got more kind of confidence in them as a, as a candidate in the process and to be able to come in and hit the ground running. I would say there is absolutely no harm in Getting, you know, if you're a mid-level developer who hasn't worked on AWS, getting, you know, the associate level certs. I wouldn't say you, I wouldn't say you need a speciality or professional. Absolutely not. I wouldn't advocate at that stage of your career. My advice is obviously up-to-date CV is always crucial. You never know when a role is going to hit your desk that you might think, actually, I want to get my CV across for that. And you might not have updated your CV for two years and then you spend three, four nights trying to do it. Always just keep it a bit up-to-date. It doesn't have to be perfect, but keeping it as many up-to-date as you can. LinkedIn is a big one. Um, keep that as up to date as you can, as detailed as you can. Every recruiter, myself included, will not only have a network, but will also look to a wider network to see if there's anyone else out there that we've maybe not engaged with yet. If you don't show up on search because you're not putting you know, the keywords in that you want to work with, like JavaScript frameworks or you know backend frameworks for Java or Spring, etc., you're not going to get seen by them. An up to date, detailed LinkedIn can massively help. So one little extra follow-up question is, obviously, uh, I teach serverless. That's kind of my whole jam. And I often get questions from people who are asking the, about how to get a specific job like using serverless. What advice would you have for someone that's like, I want a serverless role? So for me, it's a number of things. I mean, you could do trying to Google serverless, you know, and bringing up companies, you know, who are maybe adopting serverless. Speak to your market, your you know your network. You know you will have other developers who will be able to say, "Oh, I work at a serverless company. Or I've heard that company's using serverless." Meetups, summits, all of them can tell you you know what companies are on that platform and how they're utilizing it. Again, speak to a recruiter such as myself. You know we will tell you the companies we work with who use serverless. Maybe they're not act- actively hiring either, and that is where a good recruiter can come in when they're not actively hiring. I can introduce your profile. Here is a profile of somebody who's interested in you guys as a company because of what you do you know and sometimes there they will get back and say yep let's you know have a chat let's speak to them you know and you can actually get a role where they haven't even thought about it i think the other way as well is think about the technologies that are serverless as well and keyword search them there's a few obviously on aws where if you search them as you know in a job description you will find them a lot more but you'll actually start unlocking more and more because they'll just list the tech stack of the role. They won't actually yeah. use the phrase serverless. Yeah. 
I've definitely found that searching for AWS Lambda was really good because Lambda is serverless and then normally they're like, oh, we use Lambda and then you read through the description of the job and it's actually a fully serverless job. They use an event bridge and they're using DynamoDB, but they've just tagged Lambda and none of the other stuff. They've not tagged serverless. So that's probably an extra tip to like, yeah, search for like Lambda, DynamoDB. Yeah, literally. As many as you can find is probably the, the best way. The best way, as I say, is that is probably your easiest go-to at home. The second one is use a recruit, re, use a recruiter in that space. Um, you know, if you've got somebody who specialised who knows what the client's operating on, brilliant. You know, you will unlock opportunities that weren't even actually on the market. You know, and the client themselves weren't weren't even looking at hiring for. Yeah, and that's a really cool realization that like, yeah, a recruiter can introduce you to a company that you think that they think might be a great fit for you. And yeah, that like, imagine getting a job that no one else is applying for because yeah, that's, that can like completely change things and means that the company is kind of already very interested in you. I think that's been super useful. And I think a lot of like the tips you gave earlier about like the insights of what it's like from, from your side of the table, I think are going to be super valuable and like how to, how to stand out in this market for a lot of my audience is going to be like little like it might not be everything that needs implementing but like doing one or two of those things taking an extra course or like building a project that shows off what you've got i think that can can really well it can change change how you do in interviews and how you go forward so yeah thank you very much and yeah if people want to reach out to you what's the best way for people to do that um, best way would be LinkedIn. You'll see me with a nice uh, smiley face and the Jefferson Frank banner behind me. Um, yeah, reach out there. Happy to have conversations, whether it's, you know, people are looking at jobs, people are looking to hire a depressed talent, or even if people want to, you know, get advice in the market and the ecosystem, you know, feel free to reach out. You know, the best people in the market that I work with or even just collaborate with are people who share knowledge and want, and want to share knowledge and everyone can learn something from everyone. Or, you know, if you're at one of the AWS conferences that, you know, there's, there's reInvent, there was the AWS Summit down in London this this year, any of the meetups, you know, I'm generally all around the UK speaking to people and attending those. So, you know, I'll probably bump into everyone around the market at some point yeah. face to face. One of my key takeaways from this call with Oliver is that you need to do something more. You need to be proactive to stand out as a really good serverless or just AWS candidate. He said that taking courses and building projects is a really valuable way of demonstrating your enthusiasm and your skills. This next video here will show you seven serverless projects that you can use to level up your skills and show companies how serious you are.